How to raise godly children in a very confusing world. The easiest way to bring up godly children is to live the faith you profess. Mm. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. My name is Oluwa Joba and if this is your first time here, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for always coming back to my video and for supporting your girl. I'm really, really grateful. If you are new, please consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video at any point, please don't forget to like and leave your comments below. Guys, I'm a bit shy because the person sitting beside me is... <laughs> This is my dad. I call him my dad. He's my elder brother, but he's he's literally my dad. He wrote me my first letter. I'm going to show you guys if I if you guys make me happy. But yeah, his name is Tunde Onokoya. He is my elder brother, my dad, my mentor, everything in one. Please welcome him in the comment section and please say hi to my people. Hello everyone. <laughs> nice to be here. All right. So he's a pastor. He's a lawyer. He's a father. Is everything, everything you guys. He's an amazing person. Um, he has an NGO that is called Mindful of Youth Initiative, and they work with youth to make life better. Basically, that's like the point. And we, they impact life, or let me say we, because I'm part of it as well. So yeah. So please, I'm going to leave all the details of the NGO in the comment section. I'm going to leave the name on the screen as well. So please check them out. And if you are led to um give please um reach out to them and they will your money will be worth it all you right know? so today's video i left a tag a question tag on my instagram and i told you guys to um leave questions regarding friendship being single married and um parenting, parenting thank you <laughs> yes and parenting and you guys did me well at least i got a few questions thank you so much once again to everyone that indulges me Every time I leave up a question tag or ask you guys to do something, I do not take you, you guys for granted. You are the reason why this platform still exists. So thank you so much, you guys. I'm grateful. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so, all right. So I need to also say that he's a writer. He has a book. He has two books, actually. One is Parenting God's Blessings. And the other one is... Understanding Your Parents. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Understanding Your Parents. So I'm going to leave... Is there a link? no okay no. if you want to get it how do we get it um just contact her and then... okay if you are interested in any of the books just contact me and we'll see how you can get them yeah basically yeah. but we're going to dive into the questions that you guys ask and we pray that we get to answer them and it's it gets to be useful to you guys and you guys find it really helpful because at the end of the day that's the reason why my channel exists i want to try to impact people and just make a difference the little way that I can. Yeah? All right. So, the first question is, um, I would like to know when to make a relationship work and when to leave. Mm. Relationship work and when to leave. Well, um, I think for starters, before you dive into a relationship, you must define why you are in that relationship and when we're talking of relationship here i'm talking of relationship in terms of the long haul not just a platonic relationship or mm -hmm. are you talking of uh, i'm of guessing maybe it's like um a like a romantic relationship for lack of a better yes. word yeah yeah so when to kick start it um i have no apologies when i say to people um before you start a relationship in that context, you must first seek God's face. It's, it's just something that I personally would never compromise. Because even when you do seek God's face, there's still going to be um, that what, what the Bible calls the valley of the shadow of death. You're mm -hmm. going to go through some trying times. But the comfort you have when God puts a seal on it is that you know that God has your back. Um, now, when you go into a relationship that does not have that seal, you are going to be like in the wilderness of life. Mm -hmm. And so you won't really know whether you are coming or going. So, um, but if we look at it just generally on a secular level, um, 
if a relationship is becoming toxic and what does that mean it could mean so many things in different ways if it's one that is choking you and if it's a relationship that you're not able to express yourself if the relationship threatens your own life if it takes away the essence of who you are if it um, does not allow you to express yourself in the way that God has made and created each and every one of us uniquely, then you're not in the right relationship and you need to get out before it's too late. So if you are already in it, sometimes because of the time and the resources that we've invested, we just want to make it work. Um, and then we are afraid of or mindful of what other people will say. And so we don't want to really face the reality that this thing, as they say, is dead on arrival. And the truth is that you need to be able to take that bold step. Um, I would add one thing to it, to that answer too. If, if you're in any relationship, even before you go in, but even if you are already in, find someone who serves as your anchor, somebody who serves as your mentor, to be able to um, somebody you are accountable to, even in relationships, so that if you're not getting what you think you're getting, then you may need to defer to them. Sometimes, even when you're saying it's toxic, you might actually be the one who is making it toxic. Mm. And you're looking at the other person as the person who is actually um, making it unbearable for you. Maybe you need to even look inwards. A lot of times we are more particular about what the other person it's is true. doing when we have not um, self-appraised our that's own nice. ourselves. So that's a food for thought for someone. Yeah. Um, then this person says, what is the friendship deal breaker? Like what is that one thing that is unforgivable? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, again, when it comes to unforgiveness, um, I think we're clear about what God expects, but we're also humans, and there's some things that you can take that I can take. Definitely. Um, I know of people who have had their spouses um, betray them by way of um, infidelity, for example, or even in in things that may not even be, you would consider trivial. Maybe they didn't. Okay, so let me give you an example. I had a friend whose who's, um, spouse, um, they had agreed that they were going to just have so much number of kids. And of course, the, the wife went on to um, go against that wish. And I think they had some agreeable family planning and she just didn't do it and uh, do it and so she got pregnant and the guy walked away and it was very painful you know even when a host of us said okay he should forgive and all that um it didn't it doesn't look like i mean they have the child and everything but to him he couldn't trust her Anymore. again um, and I've also had someone whose spouse, albeit even the lady this time, because I know many times it's always the guy who is on the path of infidelity. But it was the lady, and the guy said, well, um, even though by faith, as a Christian, um, he says, okay, if there is adultery, then you're allowed to mm -hmm. walk away. But he says, well, I'm going to try to forgive. And... I think um, 10, 15 years down the, line. down the line, they're still together. And it was a turning point in their Marry. relationship. So what is the deal breaker? Find out who you are and what your tolerance levels are. And see whether you can um, stomach um, what may, quote unquote, be coming. I think one of the tragedies of um, relationships, especially marriages, is that especially in recent times, is that most people don't understand the, is it the sentence for better, for worse. So we all understand for better when the money keeps rolling in, when the children keep rolling, when you buy the houses, the cars. We all know those are the better days. But we then forget the worse, worse when day. we say for better, for worse, in sickness and in health. 
I had somebody very close to me um, when the husband was dying and she, she had to go and sleep in the hospital. And years later when the husband had passed and I, I had to make a comment that I really appreciated the fact that she stood by, stood by him. And she said that was the agreement. agreement. The worst part of that agreement is that sleeping. You know, so you need to also understand that it's not just um, a recital or a rehash of something that just sounds nice. It's actually a covenant that you have made that for better, for worse, I will stand. But what the biting point for you is, I think before you even nose dive into any relationship, you need to build yourself up, discover who you are, discover what your tolerant levels are, discover the things that you can work on. Because some people, their tolerance level is very low. So the smallest thing, they are, it's not. They are out. Um, I have the privilege of being not just a youth minister, but also a lawyer. And by virtue of my profession, I've had the opportunity to come across people who um, have walked out of marriages because the way he talked to me, the way she addresses me, you know, so those things, the people who are going to hurt you most, and I dare say, are going to say some nasty things, even though they don't mean it, are going to be people who are very close to you. And you must be able to have uh, what they call a sift in your ears and your eyes so that you can sift some things out. That doesn't mean that you should be tolerant of every rubbish that is packaged and deposited on your laps, no. But you must understand that relationship requires a lot of tolerance mm. patience and of course god's grace thank you sir oh deep can you guys hear yeah deep <laughs> so how best to communicate that every need would not be met with crying that's the next question okay wow um, i think this one has to do with parenting yes well it has to do with parenting but it also has to do with spousal relationships um and I say that because um, some spouse actually um, blackmail, if I can use that word, their, their spouse with their demands, you know. And um, the common trend that you would find in marriage is if the husband, for example, does not yield to the, to wife. the wife's needs, maybe she wants something and the husband is saying it's not priority but it's priority to her um she may first of all start the crying or the snubbing or the um, puppy doll eyes or the silent treatment and then after that she may just decide um okay there's no if you want to have food you know there's food in the kitchen go and serve yourself or that's even if there's food and god help you if you are one of those men that don't know how to boil the water <laughs> then you are done for for that day or she may just say the sex is not available tonight and mm -hmm. you know all those tricks that is played out so um but even if, when it's a parent to a child i think one of the things that comes in part from parenting very, very early in life. One of the things that the present day um, generation, even my generation in, in some respect, that we try to do is to be able to satisfy our children with not just even the basic things of life, but sometimes some people may call it the luxuries of life. I know when I was young and I used to see some of um, my peers whose parents were very well to do, they used to drive cars to university. And I used to have it at the back of my mind that when I have my child, I'm going to buy a car for him when he's in university, I'm going to do this. But of course, I grew older and I grew wiser. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, that, that yeah. is not um, a responsible Thank approach. You. Not necessarily that it's bad, but um, buying a car does not make him a better person. Okay. Um, but one of the things that we need to uh, understand is that um, from very early, we need to teach our children that they can't always have everything, even when you can afford it. And that's where the difficulty is. Even when you can afford it, you don't have to always say yes. Sometimes you need to pull back and to say, no, you can't have it. And because you say no, doesn't mean that you love them any less. Yes. 
And that is a very fundamental thing that many people can't um, understand. The reality is that, especially in this present age, children will use different tricks. We know even in our own so-called conservative old mm -hmm. time, times, we, were, we know what we are using. Now it has become more sophisticated. And unfortunately, because parents want to remain um, in the circle of their children, they will literally do oh, anything. Geez. And you, can, you need to be very careful how you express love because there is a love that can kill if it is not disciplined. Hmm. There is a love that can kill if it's not disciplined. Hmm. She, you guys are very bad. Handling emotionally sensitive kids. How do you handle emotionally sensitive kids? So, one of the things you will quickly realize when you begin to have children is that um, they're different. Mm -hmm. And some are indifferent, they're independent, they can run on their own. And some want your attention. Every time. Every time and, and so on and so forth. And there are no hard and fast rules. Um, a, a lot of times we, we don't go to parenting schools before you become a parent. Uh, my pastor used to say um, marriage and indeed parenting are one of the major institutions in life that people get a certificate before, before they go into they the school go into the school um uh, much like parenting you first of all have the child then you start um parenting it's not like you go into a school and say okay yes we have the opportunity of um going through marriage counseling and parent but nobody gives you really a certificate that you've gone through marriage counseling mm -hmm. and therefore you can use it to um, um have the best child in the world no it's just a guide or a signpost on what to come. And the reality often is that you won't, a lot of the things that you are even taught in marriage counseling, by the time the reality dawns on you, you will, you will know that um, it is better experienced than, told. than imagined or told. <laughs> um, so the question says, as you said, that um, how do you handle? How do you handle? One of the things I set out to do, and I, I often use. Um, personal experiences, of course, if you have a professional who is into child care, they will give you some basic five step or ten steps. But I always defer to God in a lot of things, especially as they relate to parenting. And one of the things I learned in the course of parenting, I have a 22 year old, I have a um, 16, sorry, I have a 18 year old, and then I have a 15 year old. And I, I, I had to learn on the job that they are not the same and that takes a lot of um, time spending time um, initially I did that um, but as time grew and demands for your job and ministry and some other things you will see that you withdraw and I had to um, retrace my steps to be able to get to know each other each, each of person. the children um, thank sure. God for a dutiful wife that's always there to pick up after we men, as time may be. But whether your wife picks up or not, it does not abdicate the fact that you as a man, or even if the man picks up you as a woman, you cannot be absent. Because that attention, um, it's not about money, it's not about buying goods. It's just about trying to sit down. Sometimes it's even just a shoulder, a hand over the shoulder mm -hmm. to be able to understand. Some children, for example, when they are stray, you just need to speak to them. And the words you speak are very hurtful to them. And it will cause a change. There are others. You need to wield that big stick. And the sight of that big stick is the beginning of their wisdom. It just snaps their brain back into... Mm -hmm. um, in these days, however, of um, um, child abuse and all that, uh, I often say that the cane is actually a last resort. And really, at the end of the day, the grace of God to bring up your child um, in terms of prayer, in terms of be the presence, not presence, Mm, P R E um, S C E N C E, -E. -E. presence. Don't um, buy your the love or the attention of your children with presence. 
when you do that, the day you say no, those tantrums will start. And then you will see the emotion of um, uh, um, I'm being ignored, you know. And these days, unfortunately, again, um, the, the sh children have a short attention span. Small things infuriate them, it distracts them, causes them to go into mute mode. And then, before you can say Jack Robinson, they will tell you, um, I'm, um, I'm depressed, I'm uncomfortable, um, somebody doesn't love me. So, the answer, straight answer to that is that, let your presence be available from day one. Um, somebody would say, ah, but I have to go to work. Yes, you have to factor it around. Mm. There are some basic rules that I started from day one. Even though I know that it's going to be a bit tough. And one of those basic rules is that anything that involves my children that is important to them, I'm going to be, try to be there. Even if it's not important to me. Mm. But as long as it's important to them. And the days that I won't be there, they would know that uh, this is an exception to the rule. Mm. So just <clears throat> being intentional, being present. Yes, you have to be intentional, you have to be deliberate, and you have to be determined. Okay, because life itself will throw so many things at you, including your work. including, In fact, at some point, even ministry may mm. have to step aside. And sometimes a lot of us don't understand that uh, after our own personal relationship with God, and after, after that personal relationship with God, the next ministry you have is not actually the church. Your next ministry, ministry is your family. Because if you cannot uphold your family, you have no business upholding any church. Hmm. Very true. How do you handle your spouse's friend that is very envious about your family? Hmm. <laughs> I'm not really sure I've had that before, but I think, generally speaking, one of the things, um, among my very, very close friends, very close friends, I think I can say I was one of the few to, last few to get married. So, mm. um, and one of the rules I set for myself, nobody said the rules is that once my friends get married, I'm going to step back a little bit. Not get out of their life, but I'm just going to give them space. And a lot of times, especially we guys, we find it difficult to do that. I know when I got married, I still had, not friends, but family. That my siblings, my they were, you know, I just wanted mm -hmm. people around, around me. I'm not one to... Luna. Uh, yes. And that can have a detrimental effect on your relationship with your spouse first. But where you get into a situation where the, the issue is now the friend from the one, once you have said, this is the person I'm going to commit to, you must define, or let me say this, you must redefine your relationship with um, your friends. In fact, you must redefine your relationship with your family. Mm -hmm. Everybody must know where they are. And where they stand. The first person in your life, number one, after God, is your spouse. Not your children, your spouse. Not your children. <laughs> and I say this very clearly and unapologetically. It's your spouse. That's why the Bible says um, they shall become one mm. after they have left their parents. Their parents, you know, your spouse. Any whether it's the man, whether it's man, is your spouse. Your children will come. Now, when we say it's your spouse, it doesn't mean that the children are relegated to the background. But whatever you do, you and your spouse must be in one accord, accord in your decision making. And that decision making includes your relationship with third parties, whether family or friends. And where there is an intrusive third party mm -hmm. where that friend was because you are talking of friend it can be a family member it can even be a sibling who thinks ah this is our brother this have one at the moment or and then this lady or this man just came from nowhere and we are now second citizens you must but you know it also it depends on the way you do that don't be dismissive mm -hmm. don't be 
don't say because you are now married you make the friend or the family especially family feel less than this yes Rick. where you have a friend that is um jealous and you can visibly see it then you need to begin to regulate that relationship and define it in terms of accessibility mm -hmm. in terms of engagement yeah you must and there are various strategies these days where you especially if it's one that the person that you can't reason with you know there are some people you can't reason with yeah. them. so you have to wield the big stick you have to be nicely firm mm. nicely but firm okay um and where they don't then you need to shut it down permanently mm -hmm. and that would probably be a last resource Resort. because um the bible says for as long as it is within your power be at peace, peace with all men with all men so we yeah. should try as much as possible even in our saying hey i think you need to give us space you need to be you don't have to be nasty About to get it. your point across to people and just like you said i feel like access the access that you're giving that person mm. is maybe why the person like because the person has some sort of information about you yeah. is probably why the person is jealous so by the time like you said you cut off that access the person doesn't have as much yeah. or any information at all about you <laughs> okay so aside the fruit of the spirit what else are we to watch out for in a potential spouse in a potential spouse hmm i think that's probably going to be a very easy question for me okay. because many times when you ask people um about what is it that you are looking for yes, yes. or what is it you are expecting we know what we are going to say um born again spirit filled you know kind a professional handsome beautiful but we know all those things <laughs> so those are they are right answers yeah but you will see that there is much more to it than that so when I have the privilege to engage someone who is about to either walk down the aisle or mm -hmm. even start in a relationship, uh, one of the things I always say is look for what is not said. Mm. Look for what is not said. After marriage, you will just look at this person and say, I never saw all of these things. Yes, because you were not looking at what was not said. Mm. There are some things that will not be said, but they will be visible. Mm. So, I will give you a good example. Somebody is trying to get married now. And every time you go to his house mm -hmm. or her house, there's just this matter about the mom that is nobody says anything about. And by the time you say, ah, what's, where is mom? Or what's it? She's, she's abroad, you know. Um... She left a long time. You need to find out what happened. What happened? You need to find out what happened. Or when you are talking about a sibling, this person says we have, um, I'm one of four siblings. And you've not seen two of those siblings. Mm -hmm. And nobody just says anything, anything about, about them. You know, or you say you want to go and meet the spouses somebody that is important and they say no there's no need to go you know he will just scatter the whole thing you need to find out <coughs> excuse me Sorry. about what is not said somebody you want to get married to someone and says oh my dad is a muslim or a christian and you know um, because of it I, I just don't want to get them involved in this relationship because they're just going to scatter the whole thing you can't mm -hmm. do that. Whether he's Muslim, whether he's from whatever, is your father. Mm -hmm. And he has the authority to pronounce over that marriage, marriage. one way or the other. We just ask for grace from God. To s God created him now, or her. So when you, don't, when you leave those things that are not said, they can backfire in your That's marriage. Sure. And it may define that marriage ultimately so you need to be sensitive in those periods of during those periods of mm -hmm. courtship, courtship of dating be sensitive to what is not said be sensitive to what 
is kept. Mm -hmm. uh, I say keep. They keep it mute. When when they get to those topics, they just skip over it. It's a bomb waiting to explode, mm. and you won't enjoy it. Mm. Yeah. Aside the tall, dark, and handsome, and the beautiful, yes. and the God fearing. Mm. Look for what is not said. I have a question that popped up in my own head when you were talking. When you, I saw the question somewhere on, on the internet. So when you break up with someone, like boyfriend and girl, not yes. married, yeah. are you expected to return the gift that they've given to you? Hmm. <laughs> well, I can answer that in two ways. I can answer that. Um, Professionally, <laughs> as a lawyer, answer that maybe just as a Christian generally. It depends when you are in a relationship, even in friendship, we give mm -hmm. each other gifts. Mm -hmm. It would depend on a lot of things mm. and the kind of gift we are talking about. Some gifts are given, you give me a gift as a birthday present when we are dating, I'm not going to give it back to you. You understand me? However, I may choose to give it back if it will cost me too much emotional damage. Okay. Some people, the more they keep seeing that thing, the more they, the are more they would yeah, be reminded of the frustration and the betrayal or whatever ended the relationship. that relationship. So, some people may choose to give it back. Some people may just choose to discard it. Mm, okay, instead. But I don't think there is an obligation to give it back, except the gift is a gift in furtherance of solidifying that relationship. Like a ring. So if it was a ring that somebody gave you to in in preparation for engagement and whatever, mm -hmm. and he gave it to you, well, he's no longer engaged to you now. Give his ring back to Can't you. Can't I go and sell it? Why am I giving him back? <laughs> At least he gave it to me. Well, he <laughs> gave it to you with the intention that something was going to follow from And when the danger has left... So if the... For me, I think, to be sincere with you, yes, sir. If, uh, and I know it's always the la man that gives the lady yeah. a ring, but I don't think it would change my, my, my thinking process, my thought process, if I was still a lady. The fact that that thing has ended, I think it would speak um, of a... I don't know, there's an integrity issue that I would have to okay. retain that ring. That ring. Okay, and then to sell it... To sponge of it speaks of the kind of person I have. Okay, in any case, I have a personal um, style of even in friendship, if I walk away from it, I will make sure that I leave it in a civil state. Mm -hmm. In other words, I can still see you in the future and be civil enough. You can just say hello, how are you? We don't have to, because okay. we are no longer going, it doesn't mean that we have now become enemies. enemies. Like um, a Yoruba proverb will say, just because we are fighting doesn't mean that I wish you yes. dead. You understand? So yeah. that would be my own personal. But again, we all have our own personal <laughs> agendas. I don't think um, retaining a ring, for example, would be in good faith. Mm. Uh, Last question for today. It says, how to raise godly children in a very confusing world? What would be your, especially for us, that we are just raising yes. our kids? So I'll give a story to that okay. before um, I answer that, so you would have the background. Okay. Um, many years ago, some 20 years ago, when I started formally in, in, in youth and teens ministry, my, my focus was to help young people teenagers, young people to just um, flow with life and maybe I was looking at how I was, what I had gone through. Mm -hmm. So I wanted young people to have a better understanding of how they can um, thrive in life. But I found out quickly when I started, I think barely two or three years that it was actually easy for me to get hold of the young people. The young people need attention. Even when they are saying all sorts of rubbish, you know, they just want you to listen and listen and make what they are talking or saying count. It doesn't mean you are going to yield to it, but at least have a listening ear. Yeah. But a lot of us as parents were not doing that. And so... God, you know, each of us, we have gifts. Mm -hmm. 
And I found out that one of the gifts that God gave me was to be able to listen to young people. Even though many of my peers later would say, the things they are talking, doesn't it actually irritate you? You know, but everybody have their calling. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some other things that people would do now that will irritate me and they enjoy it. And later, I found out that even though I was succeeding with the young people, mm -hmm. I would, a young man would have a um, fight with the mom or dad and I would intervene and I would say, go back home. Even though it was the dad that was at fault, say, go back home, go and apologize. Because even though your dad was at fault, you shouldn't have disrespected yes, him. Mm -hmm. And he would go, and at the, in the middle of him apologizing, the father or the mother would have inflicted another insult or barricade of um, um, verbal assault on him. And then I thought, I need to actually assess um, parents. parents first. As well. In fact, that was what informed my first book, Parenting, Parenting God's, God's Children. Blessing. God's How blessings. do you parent God's blessing? So it was after I wrote that book that I now decided, okay, let me now talk to my young people on how to best understand their parents. Their parents. And that's how I the second, second book. book, Understanding My Parents. Now, how does this um, all link together? In 22 years, when I first wrote my book, Parenting God's Blessings, I'm on the verge of doing a review. Some of the thoughts I expressed there are no longer valuable. Now, for, for this, this current... Because when I tried to use some of them, it wasn't working. Mm. And I know that I have to go and reteach myself some things on how... Still the same basic principles about parenting, but just different methods. And so, how do you bring up children in this age? Understand one thing. The basic principles are still there. Respect honesty, patience, um, and all those virtues that we know, they're still there. But their delivery is now different. Mm. You understand me? Um, respect now, in the olden days, is parents and children respect your father, your father and your, and your mother. mothers. Well, now, father and mother, you two respect yourself <laughs> and respect the child. Yes. I always say something. A child that is a day year old must be respected. How? When he's sleeping, don't make noise so that he doesn't wake up. Mm -hmm. It starts as little as that. The, the challenge parents have is that um, once I say it, it it's starts. Low. No. Now you have to sit down and reason and let them understand mm -hmm. why you said no. In my days when we say, don't go out, you say, yes, sir. You may go out, oh, but you do it at the back of your father mm -hmm. or your mother. But now, when you say don't go out, they will ask you why. Mm -hmm. And you better have an answer for it. Otherwise, even if they don't go out, they are scheming on how to go out. And the next time, they won't tell you. Mm -hmm. And you won't know. And even if you know, they will say, what do you what want do you to want do? do? So, I found out that one of the easiest ways to engage our children especially as they begin to form and begin to want to take decisions, is to sit down and try to reason okay. with them. And sometimes give them a leeway. You know, just release the rope a little bit. Dad, I want to go out with a friend. Okay. I would like to know his parents. Mm -hmm. my, my children, especially my daughter, I'm not sure she has asked me she wants to go out once that I've said no. Because I know who she's going out with. I know where she is because she tells me and I trust her. But that comes from a position of having to nurture that engagement with her. I always tell my children, bring home your friends. Mm -hmm. And the ones that they bring home, I will take some extra effort to go and meet you know, parents. their parents. So when they tell me they are with somebody's parents, I know who they are. And if I have some... Resentment or reservations, I would call and say, look, I'm not saying she's not your friend, but look at this. So it comes to a lot of reasoning together. The days of daddy has said something. And it is law. And it's law. Hasn't passed. And that is one of the fundamental things that we need 
to be able to overcome as parents. That is not about laying down rules and then expecting. These people are more exposed than you are. And there are many ways they can sideline you without you knowing. So I would rather we just sit down and talk about, and talk it. about it. Agree to agree or agree to disagree. And by the time you are agreeing to disagree, you know, especially if it's not a routine that you always disagree, they will respect you. Mm -hmm. They may not agree with you, but they will respect you. So one of the major things you'd say is sit down and sit down reason and with them, engage with the children. Engage. And don't think they are too young. Engagement can be even as early, depending on the child. As I said before, there's a child that is 10 years old and there is one that is 15. And the child 10 years is more smarter than the 15. But from as early as when they can be taking decisions, mm -hmm. you know, you see it from the the outfits they want to they wear. Want to wear. The, when they go out, um, the other day we took my son to school. As far as he was concerned, we should just be going. We are crowding him, you know. So you know how to respect their space. space. Because when you two were in school, you didn't want your friends to be seeing your mom cuddling you and kissing you. It was embarrassing to you. Okay, so why are you doing it to your own children? You know, those kind of, they may seem, I'm showing love, yeah. But they are in those ages where they just want to, at least in front, show that they, are, they have arrived. Respect that space. When you are in the house, you can do all those things. Lovely, lovely. And they know that it's me and mommy or me and daddy yeah, together. But so, how do you then bring it in, sorry to cut how do you then bring it into, like, bringing up godly children? in this because a lot is going on mm. in the world right now so and a lot of us are trying to i don't know if it was easier when we were growing up i know that there were things go, like happening back then as well but it feels like now there's so much exposure there's so much um wokeness for the lack of a better word and some of us just want to raise our children in the way mm. of the lord so how mm. would you tie that into raising godly children i think one of the things for raising godly children and I speak specifically with my own faith which is christianity is that i always say the bible is a complete book and the easiest way the easiest way to bring up godly children is to live the faith you profess mm. that means we know they say god is love um John 3, 16, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that, that he, gave. he gave his only begotten son. So the essence of our faith, the centerpiece of our faith is actually love. Well, can your children see it in you first? A lot of times the faith we profess is not exemplified in the life we in ourselves life. live. So we are the terror of the house and we are the um, beloved in the church. So they don't see the kind dad or the kind mom that the Bible talks about. And the minute they are able to get out, they are running away. There is no way you can, you know, there is so much you can achieve when what you say uh, aligns with what you do. When it doesn't, they just will be um, there for the time being. You know, once you turn your back, they will just mm -hmm. be looking at you like this. Mm -hmm. You know, the life that we live as Christians must be true. You know, there, there is something about the practicality of life that people see. And they cannot, they, it, it can't be disputed. When you tell somebody, um, you know, it's a matter of integrity. What you say must align with what, what you, you do. do. And when they can see that in you as a dad, as a mom, that doesn't mean they won't go astray, by the way. But, you know, there's something about, there's something about going astray and you know that you have hurt someone who really, really um, is out there for you. The Bible calls it godly sorrow. You are very sorrowful. You want to make it. Back. But there are some children, when they go astray, they are not bothered because... The man that, or the dad, or the mom in the house, are they Christians? So, we as Christians and as parents 
must set the tone first. Let the life we live as Christian set and speak for us. You know, and that cuts across different areas in our speech, in our conduct, in our relationship with one another, in our response to the even when they err. And I don't know any child, even we as adults, that did not stray. Mm -hmm. Even when they go astray, our first response must be how to bring them back. back. Then we can use the build, but the first thing must be how to bring them back. That's the story of the prostitute. The prostitute in the Bible heard she went astray. It was established that she committed fornication or adultery or whatever. But Jesus was not focused mm -hmm. on that. His first response to the woman and to the people, people. who wanted to <clears throat> stone, her. stone her, which is the punishment, that's the law. So now, what I'm saying is that, yes, we've, our children are doing something bad and we need to punish them. But that is not our first response. And when your child knows that the first response is that you will have my back. Mm. No matter what. I always tell people, and especially the young people, that no matter what you do, I will always stand by you. I will condemn what you do. That no. is wrong, but I will stand. And so what did that man do? Jesus said, let him who is without, without sin, sin cast the first stone. And everybody left, dropping their stone. Then he went on. He looked at the woman and said, where are your accusers? And she said, they are, she couldn't find mm -hmm. them. They were nowhere. Second thing. Third thing. What was he say? Go he said, sin. go. I that was the discipline. Him. And don't do it again. Again. So if we understand our faith in the context of when our children do something wrong, we're still going to back them up. But our first response would not be to bring out the dagger and, and stab them. Then we can begin from that to grow them in the nurture and admonition of God's word. Of course, we, it goes without saying, our relationship, their, their own relationship with God cannot start later in life. It must even start from the day of conception. You cannot speak God as an alternative and then want to raise a godly child. When you have something that is, you are in their need, your children know that the first thing you do is to go on your knees. And they can see the evidence, the manifestation of the reality that, you got, that the God that you serve. It will, you know, it's a seed that you are sowing. They may not even, in fact, this is the truth. When your children are growing up, they don't know the God you serve. You are the one who told them that Jesus died on the cross. They don't know that. But as they grow older, mm -hmm. that message begins to sink into them. Now, the difficulty that most parents have is the, the transmission of your God to become their own. Many parents miss it. And they miss it because you have read that Bible study in the morning mm -hmm. that God is love. That God forgives, mm -hmm. that God um, is kind, and they cannot see any of the attributes. In in it. So they only see when they read the Bible. When they read the Bible, they can't see it in real life. So you can't blame them when they can't project that. So immediately, once they have the wings, they fly out. If you are lucky, some would go out and form their own and get their own God somewhere mm -hmm. else. Some would totally go just go astray. But the job, really, we need to do our own, and that is to live the life we profess in God, and God does the rest. Wow, I feel like I'm, I feel very a bit heavy, because it feels like me. I got it directly, but I hope you guys got it too. But thank you so much, sir. Um, it was a very enlightening, enlightening conversation. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for um, sending in your questions. I really, really appreciate them. And if you did enjoy this video, I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, please leave your comment in the comment section below. And if you can relate to anything that Bratunde has said, that's what I call him. 
Um, please leave your comments in the comment section below as well. Um, don't forget in the description box, I'm going to leave the details to his um what's it called ngo so that you can support and also be a blessing to other people once again if you haven't subscribed please go ahead and hit subscribe button and i hope that i see you again in my next video jesus loves you bye <laughs> bye, -bye.